Oh, fuck. Hold on. <laughs> wow. That was beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> we were just discussing you whistle what out? Yeah. I think Like I whistle... how you whistle, how you're supposed to whistle. <laughs> I whistle in. You like suck in the air in. No? I don't think that's correct. Oh, fuck. But. <laughs> you're a designated uh, Mockingjay caller. If we were going to be out in the mm-hmm. field. Yeah. Uh, we were going to have to come up with something else, because yeah. I don't think my whistles are really going to cut. No, it's just going to be the sound of my ass clapping. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, so we're covering the Hunger Games today, and I do not believe you put a bunch of 16-year-olds in there and none of them are swearing. Oh, you absolutely. Me, as I'm getting stabbed, I'd be like, fuck, shit! <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck, man? <laughs> oh my god, you're such a cunt! <laughs> <laughs> But this is The Swamp. It's our podcast, and it's an acronym. Stands for some whack-ass movie podcasting. And Happy New Year to all who celebrate. Yeah. Um, and it's 2023. It's 2023, and this January, we're doing January. Y-A <laughs> as in young adult. I probably should just say Y-A January. Yeah, Alyssa actively told you not to say that, and I like that you still, you went for it. Yeah, I just think that it... Th- you know, I'm workshopping it. There's something in okay. there. The, yeah. the letters Y and A yeah. in January. Mm-hmm. It it just isn't. There's uh, something there for you to work with. It's just January is maybe not it. No, I don't think so. I'll come back next week with maybe an improved title. Okay. Uh, but as of right now, Y A January, young adult books mm-hmm. that have been turned into movies that I think we're specifically focusing on ones that when we were like yeah. in middle school or mm-hmm. like in the Y A genre mm-hmm. and i know that this movie makes you feral this this is my broke back mountain <laughs> well don't say it like that <laughs> no but the way that you love that movie froth to, at the mouth yeah, yeah to your core this movie i i mean the series in general like all of it shaped me i would not be the person i am today without these books without these movies i was quoting it the entire time you really like we could have turned off the the closed captioning and you could have just like done it yeah. for me. Uh-huh. It was impressive. I don't think I've watched this movie in maybe like like since high school. So like a, a, it's been a long time. I watched this like two weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> so this is yeah definitely a comfort movie for you. I haven't revisited it a ton but you and I definitely both were under the death grip that this yeah. series had yeah. over ever every like 8 to 14 year old girl. I think I read the series through and through seven times that's crazy because those books were not that good no i mean they were like they were fine but seven times you wrote fan fiction (laughs) (laughs) yeah that is true i did i wrote so i just read the fan fiction i wrote the kind of fan fiction where i had other fan fiction writers submit original characters to be the tribute that's wild and then i like wrote the hunger games i definitely never finished it i was always like a start a big idea and like never finish it and then Mm -hmm. people would be like when is chapter three coming out and i'd be like i'm in seventh grade so (laughs) probably i have like a history quiz so like probably not for a while (laughs) And they were all so self inserty, like for sure. Oh, absolutely. Which looking back, I'm like, bitch, you would have died. I would have accidentally stepped on one of those bombs right as the timer went off. I would have done it on purpose. And I- <laughs> <laughs> like that's the thing is like I totally feel you. I was like, oh yeah, I could totally like no, no shot. No. Like sitting there now, absolutely not. I think I like. Would you just kill yourself? Even as a f- 24 year old yeah even if i had to fight teenagers i still would just purposefully die yeah i can't do that shit i feel like you honestly what's the easiest way to kill yourself you step on one you throw yourself onto one of those (laughs) landmines done yeah (laughs) or i would run straight at one of the district one tributes but that feels like such a painful way to die. Yeah, getting bludgeoned. Yeah, like, unless, like, I could guarantee that they were just gonna snap my fucking neck. Yeah. Which he does. There are some really jarring deaths, considering, I, I wouldn't say this is a kid's movie, but, it, you know, certainly yeah. how old, it came out in 2012, so we were, like, young teens. Yeah, but the, 12, the, 13. And I remember the book being even more graphic. Oh, yeah, than absolutely. Especially There's like, people getting their fucking heads bashed in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, so this, this movie is kind of intense, but I definitely both, we both really loved it. They teach this in schools now. That's, well, that's how I started reading it, is that I was in seventh grade, and it was in one of my, 
like English classes, yeah, my right? English classes or something, that's, and we started reading the book, that's and they, crazy. she was like, "Don't read ahead." I read the entire series like before we finished like that book. See, because my brother in law is a, a middle school English teacher, and right now they're doing Hunger Games in like his seventh that's grade crazy. class. Right, and to me, I don't remember it being taught like I was never in a class where that was part Mm. of the curriculum which I think that's kind of a good thing that they're incorporating stuff that is like part of pop culture because that's like because I I remember reading Percy Jackson in school and like Mm. I had already read it but like something that you can all kind of like get excited about like that rather than being like we're reading a Christmas carol for the 97th (laughs) time like okay pull out Tom Sawyer ugh like yeah no who's gonna say the n-word out loud when you're doing popcorn reading like no (laughs) thank you (laughs) no really that's so bad but I I definitely read this book I think I was in fifth or sixth grade because the book Mm. came out in two 2008, I mm-hmm. believe, in the movie and 2012, which is yeah. a pretty fast turnaround because I remember the book blew up mm-hmm. like crazy. And it was one of those situations where, like, people were waiting in line outside of Barnes & Noble, like, at midnight the night before, like, the sequels were released, yeah. like, very Harry Potter yeah. in that way. Because I feel like this was... I, I don't want to say it was the first, like, dystopian teen for our, novel. Like, for our time period, it was. Like, the first one that really blew up. Yeah. It, or, like, became mainstream. Yeah. Because then, immediately after, you had, like, The Divergence yep. and The Maze Runners. Yep. And, I mean, no matter when those books came out, I, they certainly weren't as popular as they were no. after The Hunger Games. Yes. Yeah. Um, but I feel like a, a pretty big point of contention between you and I is uh, Jennifer Lawrence. She's a wedge. Her. She's a wedge between us. I love her. I'm not a fan. Mm. That's fair. I'm sorry. I do think that she ate. In this movie, she did what she had to do. Yeah. To get blasted into stardom. Uh-huh. But I think since I, she just really hasn't impressed me and I was never... Have you seen Mother? I bring it up every time. No, I have it, but I, I, I just personally haven't been a fan of especially the post-Hunger Games, like, I'm so relatable act. I just don't, I, that's the whole thing is I don't think it is. I mean, maybe it's an act, maybe it's not, but the whole, like, oh, I'm so, I eat pizza, I'm like everyone else. I'm like, shut the fuck up. Mm. You have a personal trainer and you have 0% body fat. You're not relatable. Like, you're... I don't know. I find it more relatable when stars are really transparent about, like, yeah, of mm-hmm. course I look like this. I have a private chef. Yeah. Like, duh. That, to me, I don't yeah. know, but obviously... Well, she, I'm... like, took off, like, years from acting because people were, like, sick of her in that way, I guess. She's really? just making her comeback, yeah. Interesting. With... What has she been in recently? <sighs> well, she did Don't Look Up. That was, like, her... Yeah, that movie was ass. Yeah. It was entertaining enough for me, but... Her turf bangs and that? Oh my god. That was a no for me. The fact that that movie opened up with her, like, rapping along to Wu-Tang, like, in her headphones, that I immediately was like, this is gonna be garbage. Yeah. Like, you got Jennifer Lawrence. Oh, she's so relate. She's so quirky. (laughs) She's not like the other climate scientist. Yeah. (laughs) She listens to (laughs) Wu-Tang. Oh my god. Yeah. But, um, no, I remember, like, because this, the movie came out, like, I remember, like, actively, like, I, like, read the book and the the movie was coming out, like, months later We were kind in of thing. seventh grade. Yeah. I believe. So, yeah, 2012, we were either in late sixth, yeah. early seventh grade. Yeah. So, yeah, we were seventh. the prime target. I remember, like, seeing, like, the, um, like, the PR pictures, like, from the movie and everything like that and watching the trailer and, like, different clips from it over and over and over because I was so excited to see it. I remember giving my mom a big stink about her not <laughs> letting me go to the midnight premiere. Even though I, like, I fully... It of was, course. like, a Tuesday and I had fucking... Cla- like, I had school the night. And mm-hmm. she was like, no, Dara. Like, you cannot go to the midnight premiere of this movie. You literally, you're 13. You have to go to school. And I was like, this is all I've ever wanted. And she was like, can you shut the fuck up? Like, no. <laughs> Be reasonable. I think I did go to the midnight premiere of maybe, like, the second one or yeah. something. Like, I think down the line that that was a reality for me. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I remember this being a huge deal. And obviously, I was always one of those, like... <laughs> You guys are just getting into this now. I've liked that for so long. Like, mm-hmm. I'm already over it. That was, like, my whole shtick as a as a young, you know. <laughs> Ugh. So, like, I, you know, I read Hunger Games I probably, like, literally three months before it got popular or something yeah. like that. But as soon as it got popular, I was like, oh, my God, you guys are still into that? Ugh. <laughs> but, like, secretly, oh, no. I was really excited that everyone was reading it. Oh, yeah. It. <laughs> yeah. Did you have, like, the Mockingjay pin? I, I don't 
know if I was quite that balls mm-hmm. deep into it, but I did wear my hair in a side braid. You for, were you were a side braid girl. For like, I've only ever know I that's how I met you. Yeah, side braid, side braid queen. Uh-huh. I did, I would like to think that it wasn't because of this book, but it totally was. Yeah. Like yeah. it totally Absolutely. was the Katniss braid. And I was not the only like, one. Like it was it was exactly the same. Yeah. <laughs> With, like, my unbrushed hair. <laughs> yeah, it was really slaying. Yeah. Your red hair. Actually, that, that came later. A little later. I used to have, like, Ariel, like, fire engine red hair, because I liked attention. <laughs> <laughs> I want indirect attention only. Yeah. <laughs> Look at me, but from afar. <laughs> um, yeah, and clearly I hate attention still. I have a podcast. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> This is, like, the most, like, indirect way of getting attacked. Like, I don't know you. You guys just listen. Well, I I, I never have to see you. I feel like we know each other because I beg all of you every week to DM us on Instagram, and a lot of you do. <laughs> Please talk to me! I feel like we're friends. Yeah. Um, if you want to create a that's parasocial relationship with us, I endorse I'm, that. I'm down for that. Yeah, that's all. I'll, I'll be your, your bestie. There's a couple of girlies that I message. Yeah. <laughs> You know who you are. Shout out. Yeah, we're mu- we're mutuals on Instagram. <laughs> uh, and that being said, please in- um, Instagram or you know DM us on whatever platforms. We we actually really do like talking to all of you. Which please share your like unhinged like fandom stories oh my from God. when. Like because I feel you were in it. I feel though like a lot of the girlies back in the day would have like taken a bullet in the chest. Over some like hard stances on like, media things, like absolutely, like Harry Potter Dude, shit. The super what, what what was it called? Super, super hulak. Oh my like, god! Like those girls. Come D- on! Don't even get me started. <laughs> I feel like there's this podcast where the I it comes up on my TikTok a lot, and it's these two guys, and they they call them the Panera Girls, and they were the oh girls who would just sit at Panera and like write fan fiction in middle school. Oh my god! And I really associate like this was the time that for some reason we all thought Panera was so good. Yeah, it, it wasn't. It's hospital food, but like why? Exactly. Why were we all thirsting over mac and cheese out of a bread bowl like right before going mm. to see the Hunger Games at? The Blackstone Valley Movie it's Theater. Just something about it. Like, <laughs> just something about take it. Take me back. <laughs> right before getting a frappuccino at the Barnes and Noble Starbucks. Oh my god! Just and your free cookie. Something in the air. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but if you haven't seen or read The Hunger Games, I you really must fall out of our target demographic, huh? Yeah. Because, <laughs> because if she hasn't seen the young Hunger Games, she's too young for you. Yeah. <laughs> But obviously the kids today, st- they're still teaching it in schools. It, I feel like yeah. it must still be popular. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Is it? Or, or do kids these days think that it's like, oh, that was so 10 years ago. Like, that's so millennial. Ugh. Do they think that it's like, I don't know. Is it cringe? Yeah. I hope not. Is it cringe? I, hopefully, it's... if you're in seventh grade, I really hope you're not listening to this podcast. Um, but if you are, don't message us. But uh, I'll I'll ask my brother in law actually who's a teacher if if his kids are into it or if yeah. they if they think it's cringe I bet they like it because again what there it's in between reading like where the red fern grows yeah and fucking yeah Tom Sawyer yeah basically I it's, it's, it's a nice kinda cool. yeah it's a good switch up but yeah the plot Katniss volunteers for the Hunger Games so her sister doesn't have to go in Hunger Games it's a dystopian society capitalism mm-hmm. is bad they, all the kids have to kill each other yeah her and Peta they do a little PR stunt. They kill everyone. They're the final two. They're the winners. That's that's it. That's, yeah. It's basically, it's setting up the groundwork uh-huh. for what would be a really great series with a horrible ending, in my opinion. I mean, it kind of does. I fucking hate it. And again, th- spoilers, spoilers, if for some reason, if for the past yeah. decade and a half, you haven't, you know, informed yourself of what happened in the Hunger mm-hmm. Games. Um, Prim gets fucking bombed. Dude, do you think Katniss would have still volunteered if she knew that Prim was just gonna get blown the fuck up in six months? Hmm. Probably. Yeah. Better, I I mean, bet what? Better to die at the hands of another 16-year-old or to get blown up mm. by your love, in- love triangle interest? <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I think, hmm. That's a good question. Because, I mean, she does, like, free the entire, like, society. Yeah. 
but... Which, the power of one teenage girl, you know, clearly that's all it takes. <laughs> that's all it takes to, to free us of our shackles. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If we, you know... <laughs> one, one kiss with a man that you don't like. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I do think that this book had some good messages for, you know, as far as, like, standing up to unjust power structures. Mm. And I think that there was some good intention with it, for sure. But I think that there's so much going on. And unfortunately, the big takeaway that, ev- like, a lot of the cultural discussion was, like, are you Team PETA or Team Gail? Which and, is like, and which one were you? I was a real contrarian. Mm-hmm. And also, I didn't really like josh hutcherson's blonde hair yeah in this so i always said that i was team gail just to like be just to like be, be yeah. annoying again that's i was like oh i'm team jacob oh i'm team gail mostly mm-hmm. just to like do the thing that nobody else was doing but i actually i fucking hated the romanticization of this like even when i was in middle school mm. and and i would usually eat that shit up you know mm. i i loved a, a complex love triangle i loved uh, <laughs> you know picking sides but with Twilight, it felt like it was inherently there. Mm-hmm. And with this, I always felt like people were really reaching, especially mm-hmm. with this first movie, because her and Gail are like, it's like a brother-sister relationship. Yeah. Which I felt like, I'm like, okay, so you obviously yeah. have to have read the other books and seen the, or seen the other movies to uh-huh. get that romantic implication. Yeah. But I feel like people who hadn't ever read the books and had just seen the movie were still extracting that mm. at the time. And it was very like, oh, are you Team Peter or Team Gil? I'm like, just say it. That's like just being like, which of these two um, conventionally attractive men is your personal preference? It has nothing <laughs> to do with who you think Katniss should be with because yeah. the, the you know, problems that she's facing are so much bigger mm-hmm. than... And her whole relationship with Peter, the whole PR thing, I think that's an interesting discussion to have. But who's rooting for that? <laughs> You, I guess. I was. I just thought Josh Hutcherson was hot. I don't know. Something about that little man. <laughs> Josh Hutcherson walked so that Tom Holland could run. Yes. Stop. Oh my god. <gasps> he was the first short king. Oh, tell you're so me. right. You're he, so right. He paved the way. How tall is he? 5'8". I'm gonna, I'm gonna put my money that he's 5'8". Under 5'10", for sure. Which, I, I love a short king. I think 5'7 is the perfect height for any person. <laughs> no. No, that, n- that's not true. No that, that, that can't be true. There must be putting him in some, like, little heeled shoes or something, because how tall is Jennifer Lawrence? I bet she's 5'10". Yeah. Look up her height. I bet she's 5'10". No, he's not 5'5". Five five. That can't be true. Google says... Oh my god. You showed me a video of him at a Tuve Lu concert pe- playing the bongo drums from like pretty recently, and it was sexy. Oh my god. Wait, hold on. What is this lineup? Oh my god. Jennifer Lawrence is like 5'8. Okay, and, and he, uh, the Hemsworth is what? Well over six feet. Oh my god. So I'm saying they must have put him, or they must have done some like, you know groundwork to put him a little closer to the camera to make Bro, him look bigger. Oh, uh, short king. That's what I'm saying. Tom Fucking Holland would king. have never had a shot in hell. How tall is Tom Holland? I'm also gonna say, what, 5'8"? Five, five, but he's got that same, I don't know, build about him, you know? That flavor of boy really took off after oh, Josh Hutcherson paved the way. But I, I gotta say, I hated his blonde hair. They his did his not, blonde hair was fucked. They did not have to give him that dirty-ass dye job. They, they, that's, like, the one thing. They were bad with the dye jobs. At least in this one. Even freaking Caesar Flickerman's was bad. That looked like the eye party, um, spray, like, spray. Yeah. It was, it was rough. Yeah. Especially because everyone else in the Capitol was slaying. Snatched. So Fucking snatched. I loved his flipper. That was probably my favorite part, was oh Stanley Tucci's flipper that he wears. <laughs> and that big smile he does. He's, like... He maybe serves the hardest in this movie. Absolutely. Oh my god, that's my fucking king. <laughs> Ugh. Yeah, as much as um, my love for Josh Hutcherson was there, like, he's not good. He's not good in this. Like, no one is actually, like, a good actor in this. Besides, I could say, I, I'll, I'll give it to Jennifer Lawrence um, and Woody Harrelson and Elizabeth Banks. Okay, yeah, and and I would argue, though, that you didn't really have, 
no, nobody had to be good. No. Because I think the, the story was cutting edge yeah. enough. The, the you know, dialogue. I think it was pretty well written. Um, yeah. Suzanne Collins. For YA, like... Yeah, Suzanne Collins did the screenplay uh, with somebody yeah, else God. for this. So it's... And I always felt like her books kind of read very cinematically. Yeah. Yes. So I think probably the transition from writing to screenplay was probably very easy for her. Uh-huh. And it was already a very, like, stimulating story. Absolutely. So it's not hard um, to, like, translate, like, oh, we're gonna have all this crazy shit happen. Like, obviously it's gonna uh-huh. be... I don't know, kind of wild. I think, yeah, I think the only person who really did have to put in, like, work mm-hmm. was whoever was going to play Katniss. Because yeah. there's a, sort of a emotional vulnerability yeah. that she was going to have to have. Yeah. Whereas, like, I don't know, PETA, he's just hanging out. He's just... He's just trying his best. He's just a rock. He He's is just, just a guy with a... <laughs> With, with some uh, cake decorating skills. He is, you know, the, those is it cake... <laughs> like memes yeah P- Peta invented the is it yeah, cake really. when it, it cracks me the fuck up that first scene where he's turning his arm into tree bark for a little foreshadowing uh-huh. Katniss is like oh my god how do you know how to do that and he's like cake decorating bitch where <laughs> like okay buddy Velastro yeah, smoke in New Jersey <laughs> <laughs> are you on the fucking food network doing oh those god. like Literally wild. The, and they show his parents' bakery, and I'm like, they could not even... They're in, like, the, the most rural... Bumfuck. Un- like. Bumfuck, yeah, part of the world. They could not afford fondant. <laughs> no. No fucking shot. Yeah. It, it, insane. But him, his face as that rock, <laughs> and when she's just like, oh my god, Peta, I'm like, first of all, no way you spotted him. But second, when he, like, opens his eyes... <laughs> And you see, like, the red <laughs> ring under his eyes. S- jump scare. So funny. It's so funny, dude. <laughs> oh, my God. And then she's like, maybe I am in love with him. <laughs> no, ma'am. I just love that Jennifer Lawrence came off of doing, like, the most insane and brutal movie, like, Winter's Bone, where she, like, actively, like, has to cut off her dead father's hands and, like, it, like it, insane. It's an absolutely insane movie. I've it's, never seen it. It's, well, I remember, like, once I had seen this, I was like, okay, now I'm going to be hyper fixated on Jennifer Lawrence. So, For of course, sure. I watched that mm-hmm. as, like, a 15-year-old. Um, but, like, that movie is so insanely brutal. Like, yeah, of course she was going to eat this up like it was nothing. Yeah. <laughs> she got an Academy Award nomination for that one, I think. Wow, really? I didn't know. I- yeah. I don't want to say, like, indie darling, because I don't think that's how she was described or anything, but I remember when she got cast in this, it was kind of a big deal because she certainly beat out a lot of, like, more A-list yeah. people. Uh, not that I know any off the top of my head, but it was kind of like, oh, she's this unknown, like, yeah. gritty kind yeah. of, yeah, actress. Shocked um, that a fanning wasn't, um... <laughs> oh my god. Too blonde. Running. Yeah. Too blonde. It, a fanning like, could have been on, what, Glimmer? Oh, uh, true. The District 1. Yeah. Wait, can we talk about our favorite Nepo baby, Jack Quaid? Shut up! As, the, ah! like, as like, the District 2. What was his name? Um, oh, fuck. No, he was District 1. Uh, Marvel. Marvel. Oh. What? Love it. I, little baby! I fully forgot he was in this until the Nepo baby conversation really blew up and everyone was like, yeah, Jack Quaid from The Boys, which, like, duh, but, like, also mm-hmm. The Hunger Games. And I was like, oh, shit. Yeah. He also, he only had to just show up. He didn't do anything in this other I than loved get it. shot. That's fine with me. <laughs> oh, my God. Him, the fucking orphan, Isabel Fruman. Yep, yep. I watched a movie pretty recently that she was in about, like, rowing. Like competitive college <laughs> rowing, okay, and it wasn't very good. Yeah. But she was she was fine. Yeah, but I, I'd like to see her prosper. Yeah, absolutely, I'd like to see her in some more mainstream. Yeah. Put her in a in a Wes Anderson. That's my oh, uh, request. True, I think she'd yeah. eat. <laughs> I think so too. Well, she ate in this actually. She yes. was good in this. Her? That scene where she's straddling About Jennifer to- Lawrence like face to face, basically breathing in her mouth. She's giving that made me gay. A, she's giving a little speech, and I'm like, "Bitch, yeah, you gotta. This is your number one competition. Like, you gotta Speed slit, up. slit the throat." And she, yeah, she's. But her her tone is a little sexual. It is super sexual. And she has the big knife to Katniss's throat, and then she takes out this little two inch <laughs> dagger. It's so cute. Holds it to her cheek as if she's gonna do a little like, "Let me cut your cheek" as like yeah. a little warning. But then she 
winds back as if she's gonna stab Katniss with this two inch little and then our boy Thresh coming in oh for God. the fucking kill. Yeah. That was it for me. When because in the book, in the book <laughs> he, he bludgeons her he, to death with a rock. He rocks her shit. Yeah. He just smashes up the skull, which I remember the I was very into the like Tumblr posts mm-hmm. of like book to movie, you know, yeah. inconsistencies mm-hmm. or whatever, which like I don't know. Maybe that was a smart choice that they didn't put the skull crushing yeah. bludgeoning, you yeah. know, in a PG thirteen movie. Was this PG thirteen? I think it. so. Um, yeah. I mean, they had some pretty graphic shit in this. Yeah, I would say two of the deaths that, like, really get me is just really simple when Kato just snaps that, that kid's boy's neck. neck. yeah. That is very jarring, but obviously we have to talk about Rue. Oh my god, you mean <laughs> Amanda Stenberg? I was gonna say, out of talking about who eats in this movie... She really... She ate. She served. She served. She, she did. She proved her shit, because I don't know, had, was she in anything before this? Like, she was pretty Not young. I know of. No. But... Yeah, and she hasn't... Re- she didn't do, like, a ton, like, really in the spotlight for the last couple of years, but obviously she was just in Bodies, Bodies, Bodies. Amazing. Yeah, outstanding. I would like to see nothing but, uh, you know... Yeah. Fame and fortune for Miss Amanda. My favorite, my favorite, and I've definitely talked about this on here before. My favorite, like, piece of knowledge is that she's, like, the breakup that King Princess had that, like, she never recovered from. Oh my god. You didn't know that? I don't think so. Her entire first album is written about Amanda Stenberg. That's, that's amazing. Yeah, it's, like, this huge, like, breakup album. And she still puts out songs that are, like, oh, I wonder if she thinks about me. (laughs) And she actively has, like, a girlfriend, like... She oh, has what? the Hunger Games on repeat <laughs> in the in the studio to just, like, yeah. get a little... Yeah. She has Rue's death scene just on repeat to make her feel, you know, yeah. like she's getting her... Yeah. <laughs> but her revenge. Rue's death is... On, like, a nine-year-old Amanda. <laughs> <laughs> maybe not, maybe not. <laughs> uh, but it is, like, so graphic. When oh, my she, God, yeah. She pulls that Pull spear it. out of her, like open gaping which i don't gut i don't know much about anything but i do know if you get stabbed you leave that shit in your body you don't pull that's how you die is you're gonna bleed out which obviously there are no emts in the ring to you know (laughs) the ring to try to oh my god put you out of your imagine getting stabbed like that's one thing that i was thinking about a lot this movie getting stabbed in the head (laughs) yeah oh my god when fucking clove um is like on top of katniss she's swinging down like she's trying to stab her in the head could you imagine getting a knife through your skull i can't even imagine being the person trying to do the stabbing because like you gotta put forth you feel quite that. a bit of force. Yeah, you feel that. That's like killing a bug. You get that crunch. <laughs> but definitely back in the day, I, I was very much like, if I was gonna be in the Hunger Games, this is the weapon I would want. And what I def- one? I definitely, oh, prob- probably a bow and arrow because I was a basic bitch, but... I don't have the coordination for that. I know that. No, same. I mean, not a spear either. I'd probably go sword because, but I'm also small and swords mm, are fucking heavy. I think I would have to do like trap setting. Like, 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 wait in the trees for ho- some shit to happen, because mm-hmm. I, I don't think... Or, See, yeah, I, poisoning. I couldn't, I couldn't do that. I'm so scared of heights. Uh, yeah, you... Would... What arena would you be able to, like, thrive in the best? Not water, that's for fucking sure. <laughs> Can you not swim well? I cannot swim. <laughs> I can't tread water, so I can move- I can't tread water! I can move forward at a not a good pace. <laughs> Um, and, like, and I freak out if I can't touch the bottom for, like, more than a little bit. Like, I'm not a good swimmer. Um, so I definitely would not do good in the water. Uh Um, unless there was, like, water skis or something. I could slay that. (laughs) (laughs) Unless I got a little, uh, little life vest. If I was anywhere cold, I'm fucked. Yeah, no. I I was always kind of disappointed that this first arena was so boring. Because we then, we get the most, like, cunt- well-designed arena in movie two where they're like we're gonna do all the arenas combined together and also like the fortnightification of like the clock that moves and you have to stay within the zone of the clock fortnite copied suzanne collins there's a lawsuit but well you know fortnite like the the video game yeah no i know and like the circle that closes in on you and you have to stay in and that's how the game like gets that's how the second arena was and right basically the clock you had to stay out of the time zone Mm -hmm. was what it was but yeah Still, maybe that's kind of a stretch. Eh, no, I, I can still see it. I would say I'm okay 
at climbing. So anything that, like, I could climb up mm-hmm. a big, you know, face to, like, hide somewhere. Yeah, somewhere rocky. I mean, yeah, maybe, like, a mall. If they if they had it be, like, in a shopping mall and I could really navigate, like, I would know how to hide in the clothing racks of, like... Oh, yeah. Of the Charlotte Russe. Of the... Sh- not the Charlotte Russe. <laughs> Of the clearance section in Forever 21. Oh, yeah, nobody's gonna find me there. <laughs> Are you kidding? Behind the counter of the Annie Ann's pretzels. <laughs> feasting. Oh my god. Yeah, you'd eat. Yeah, if they had it at the Natick Mall, I think I'd really <laughs> Natick slay. Mall. That'd be crazy. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> the Mall of America? No way. Roller coasters? No. <laughs> That's too much. That's too much. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, I think I could do any sort of like thing with a lot of a lot of like structure in it. Mm. Um but like a desert you'd be fucked. No, any any sort of like natural elements. No, ma'am. Well, I think that's like the whole thing is that it's always like a natural elements kind of thing. Which is interesting because I think you're then giving the advantage to the kids who live in the more rural areas, yeah. which the book is very clearly that District 1 is, is the capital or whatever. Cap- the capital is in District 1. Is that true? I think so. And that that's the richest. And mm. 1 and 2 are obviously the richest. And then it kind of goes through and the ones in the middle are more like they have like trades and exports and they're not like, you know, super lavish or like inner city but they are like doing fine and then all the way down to 12 which is like bumfuck nowhere they have nothing mm. oh you're looking at a map of pan Am. yes yes no I've... but that's just america if it was pan Am, right is, is pan Am is pan Am um, america yes what district do we live in we're we we're district 12 i think oh no that or is that not... district 13 i can't tell that cannot be true because yeah. we would have where's the capital Where's the capital? It's probably in L.A. Probably. District 1 is... This is bullshit. No, some fucker on Tumblr made this. This is not real. Because watch, I bet all of them are different. Susan Collins has not released no, an official con- press statement of where... I don't know, but all I can tell you is that District 11 is in the South, and that is the only colony with black people. I thought it was 8. I thought 8 was where Rue and Thresh no, were 11. from. 11? Yeah. That's, this movie is so undiverse, and they're like, the two black characters are from the same district, and their export is cotton. Yeah. That's- Miss Collins? No! <laughs> that's really bad. Blonde hair, blue-eyed Suzanne Collins needs to fucking get herself in check, because that is not okay. <laughs> That is not okay. I also remember like, w- like what publisher, what editor did it not like strike ch- that? Yeah, strike it. Uh, in th- it's so undiverse. Just, all of just, the, all of them are white except for those two. Yeah. Every single mm-hmm. like you know they don't show a lot of the other kids who die mm-hmm. super early. Yeah. But there's only two black. The kids. general consensus looks like they're all white. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Jen, I'm volunteering you to be tribute uh, for the district, uh, what district do we live in? The Chocolate or Vanilla District for <laughs> the Opinion Hunger Games. <laughs> I accept the nomination. Uh, I'm sorry, that was the lamest intro ever. Um, uh, we're here, as always, with my lovely mother, Jen, for our interim podcast segment, Chocolate or Vanilla. She says two things. We all say which one we like better. Jen, how are you today? I'm pretty good. How are you guys doing? I'm all right. I'm pretty, I'm solid. You're good? That's awesome. Awesome. Um, happy New Year. Oh, happy, happy New, New Year. Year, Jen. If It seems like we don't, like, speak to each other outside of this podcast, and I want everyone to know that it's not, like, I don't not talk to my mom outside of this. Okay. When, when we're like, oh, how's your week been? Like, it's not, I'm not like, Jen, save it for the cameras. Like, that's not, <laughs> that's not the dynamic She's here. strictly your work okay, colleague. Okay, saw you yesterday. <laughs> um, but is there a theme this week? Uh, there is a theme. I could not help it with this star-studded cast. I'm going to go through and, um, do you like them in this versus something else oh, they've done? Great. Yeah. This cast is huge. Crazy. Ginormous. Yeah. So, chocolate or vanilla? Chocolate. Vanilla. Chocolate. Uh, chocolate, vanilla, strawberry? Chocolate. Vanilla. Yeah, I'm going to go strawberry just to shake it up. Um, <laughs> all right. So, first one is J-Law in this or J-Law in Winter's Bone? So, uh, we've discussed on this episode, I've never seen Winter's Bone and I don't really, from what Amelie has described it as, I don't really feel the need to. Um, it's it's but, a brutal movie. But I I don't really, yeah, all I know is that it's, like, really intense. So it got some Oscar noms, right? Yeah, so yeah. maybe her performance is more commendable in that. I don't really know, but I have to pick Hunger Games because that's the only one I know. Yeah, this is, um, this is my feel-good movie, and that's the opposite. That's my feel-bad movie. 
So I'm going to pick her in uh, the Hunger Games. Yeah, I'm going to go Hunger Games also because, like you, I have not seen Winter's Bone. Jen, um, I think you next would hate one it. Is, you think I would hate it? I think you'd hate yeah. it. I, I can handle, like, a sad movie, but... I think it's, it's also violent. Yes, yeah. it's violent. If you say I would hate it, I, I trust you, so I will not watch it. <laughs> uh, next one. Josh Hutcherson as PETA in this. Or as the voice of Markle in Howl's Moving Castle. Or as Jesse in Bridge to Terabithia. Uh, I, I originally thought that you were not going to include Bridge to Terabithia. When I'm like, wow, what a niche Josh Hutcherson role to pick. Um, but Bridge to Terabithia was just the most soul-crushing movie. And, like, why <laughs> were we all watching that at, like, nine years old? Like, that was too heavy. That was too much. Uh, but he, he killed it on that. So I'm going to pick Bridge to Terabithia, but I think I know what Emily's going to say. Markle. Easy. I love that movie so much. Yeah, I, I've never seen it. Oh, my God. I think I think you'd actually like that one, Jen. Um, but he's he's like, he, he's just scraping by on this movie. But Markle, he's he's pretty solid. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to go with Bridge to Terabithia because we that was um, on repeat for us for back sure. in the day. Um <clears throat> So next one is Liam Hensworth as Gail or as Will in the last song. What is that the one with Miley with Miley Cyrus? Cyrus yeah. Honestly, fuck Liam Hemsworth because he, I feel like, was not good to Miley. No, I he was know. terrible. I, she's she's releasing her like breakup song about him like on his birthday. It's kind slay. of iconic. We love it. Um, so he's kind of trash, but I guess I'll say him in this. Because at least he, like, doesn't really have any screen time. I think I just think he was so bad in this. And mind you, I did watch Catching Fire the day after we um, watched this. And he's even worse than that. So I'm at, I'm going to give him... I'll, I'll go with the last song. Because I remember at least, like, that's more his caliber of acting as, like, a Nicholas Sparks movie. <laughs> What a what a what is it called like a backhanded compliment? Yeah, <laughs> I I will also go with the last song for the backhanded compliment. I think he is the least talented Hemsworth, absolutely, yes. including anyone in their family that's not even on TV. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next one is Woody Harrelson as Hamish in this, as Tallahassee in Zombieland, or as Billy Hoyle in White Man Can't Jump. I've never seen White Man Can't Jump, but I do know that that was his, like, breakout role, right? Yeah. Um, Rosie Perez. Yeah. But I think I'll have to pick him in this, because he really does turn the party. Yeah, he serves in this movie. I'm absolutely choosing him in this yeah, movie. Yeah, I'll, I'll go with you guys with this, but I'm also going to say Tallahassee, was a, he did a really good job in Zombieland, too. But that's almost to the point where I'm like, are you a good actor, or are you just like that? Stop you know? playing yourself. I'm yeah. like, yeah, are you, are you just, do you just show up on set and you're just like that? Because that seems like what the deal is. That's what I want to do, show up to work and just be myself. And get paid. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, uh, next one is Stanley Tucci as Caesar Flickerman or as Nigel in Devil Wears Prada. Oh. Honestly, as much as I do love him in Devil Wears Prada, this, he is camp he is straight camp in this movie and that's what i just feel like stanley tucci is born to do that blue hair those like big fake teeth like it is just everything i want from him and more i yeah i agree with you however like i think what what's um the devil wears Prada's one's name nigel yeah i think that's well i think he was born to play this role i think that role is more like him as a person like if he was just gay, that would be who he was. So I'm gonna I'm gonna choose Nigel. Also, I want to be like Nigel's friend. Caesar kind of scares me. <laughs> True. I'll uh, I'll go with Caesar because yeah, I think he's a total scene stealer, which you could probably say for Devil Wears Prada too. True. But, Caesar would like um, sell me out for like teeth whitening though, like a really good <laughs> teeth whitening. Um, well, so speaking of camp, the next one is Effie Trinket. So mm -hmm. Elizabeth Banks is Effie. Or as herself in the Imagine parody in season three of The Boys. Oh my god, that, what a what a niche reference, Jen. <laughs> of all the roles she had, I decided to pick that one. I really just figured you'd say Pitch Perfect. Huh. I knew you thought I'd say that. Oh, um, I, I feel like I have to... 
No, I, I'm picking Effie Trinket. I'm not picking a thirty, a three second cameo of her playing herself <laughs> in an episode of The Boys. How do you even know that, Jen? You don't watch that show. <laughs> I googled it. <laughs> uh, our research assistant. Um, yeah, obviously, I'm gonna be picking Effie. Yeah, I'll, p- I'll pick Effie too. Uh, next one is Wes Bentley as Seneca Crane or as anybody that he played in American Horror Story. He's one of those like white guys with brown hair with that very specific haircut that I cannot distinguish distinguish from each other. Yeah. Like they it's... all just look the same. And to the point where the show does makes no effort to like I mean, obviously once you're a few episodes in, what characters what, like whatever, but just I don't know. At face value sometimes I'm like, is is that more than one guy? It's funny you say that because I really wanted to put the dance coach for Glee in um for vocal adrenaline i'm like oh that's not him then it was like oh no no he was the dance coach for bring it on and i'm like oh nope, also not, not him. him so yeah there's that meme where it's just like all of them lined up what like distinguish them from each other you yeah. can't um so yeah i'll have to say him in this because at least he has those little swirly beard things and i know that when i see it mm. yeah true enough um i think i'm actually gonna go for him in american horror story because i feel like i didn't get to like see that much of him in this yeah i'll, I'll go with him in this because as you would expect i hate american horror story yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um so next one is isabel Furman as clove or as Alex in The Novice. Oh, that's the name of that movie. Yeah. I just kept calling it that rowing movie, which I really didn't care for. I, I feel like she was good in it, but the movie itself felt, felt kind of flat for me. Um, but she she really turns it in this movie. I thought you would say The um, the Orphan, which is like her other mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. big, which I also haven't seen. I just know that she like really she pulls ate out all that. the stops on that one. Yeah, but I'll pick her in this for sure. Yeah, she... Her character presence is one of the things that made me who I am today. So I'm going to go with her as Clove. Oh, wow. I'll go with her as Clove, too. Um, Next one is also from District 2. uh, Alexander Ludwig as Cato or as Bjorn from the Vikings on the History Channel. (laughs) See, the only other thing I can off the top of my head pull him from is Race to Witch Mountain yes. starring Dwayne The Rock yep. Johnson. Yeah. Which and, is a um, remake of a movie from when I was a yep, kid. Yep. Yeah. It was like Anna Sophia Robb yeah. yeah. was in there too. Um, I've never seen The Vikings on the History Channel, but he I bet he could pull it off. He he looks like he could, you know, pull off some, some little some braids or something. Same, I thought he was in the new Viking movie, but that's... Um, the Northmen. Yeah, that's a Skarsgård. Yes, yeah. exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'll, I'll pick him in this because the way that he just, like, brutally slays other children, you gotta have a certain kind of coldness to you to pull that one off. <laughs> to, for me to still kind of be rooting for you at the end of the day, um, I will, yeah, I haven't seen Vikings, but, uh, so I, I, I'll choose him in this. Yeah, I'll choose him in this too. I haven't seen Vikings either. The way he self-produced, at the end there, he knew he was gonna die, yet he still put on a show. Like, mm-hmm. come on. He was like, I know you're gonna, like, feed me to the wolves, but I'm gonna, like, make a big stink about it, because I know this is gonna be great TV. It's like when a queen <laughs> knows she's going home on RuPaul's Drag Race, so they, like, do something, like, to just <laughs> stir the pot. Next one is uh, Amanda Steinberg as Rue, or as Sophie in Bodies, 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 or as Star in The Hate You Give. Ooh, that's tough, because those are, they're all, she always brings it. Mm-hmm. I've, I don't think I've ever seen her. She was in, what well, did she star in some TV show where she played, like, a kid with superpowers, and I feel like it was a huge flop. It was on, like, ABC Family or something. Mm-hmm. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe I'm getting this wrong, but I'll pick her in The Hate You Give because that movie made me sob. That mm. movie was, that movie did what it was trying to do so successfully, um, and she's great in it, and I think you have to be a certain kind of actor to do something that heavy um, and, like, really pull it off, so. Especially yeah. as, like, a, a, a young person. I've never seen that movie, um, however, I feel like her in Bodies, Bodies, Bodies was kind of um, not that uh, not a comeback because like the hate you give was before that and everything like that. But I feel like it's gonna like do a little more for her and like launch her more into the spotlight, which is exactly what I want. Um, so I'll choose her in Bodies, Bodies, Bodies. Also, that movie's like pretty funny. I have not seen that one yet. Um, 
I'll pick her as Rue because I thought she brought it as Rue and mm. definitely brought out the emotions in everybody. <laughs> three-way split. What's that? Three-way yeah, split. Three-way split. Oh, Things wow. Happen. First one in a long time. Next one is Donald Sutherland as President Snow. And Dara knows where this is going, or as yeah. John Bridger in The Italian Job. Oh my god, The Italian Job. I saw a really funny TikTok, um, for anyone who's seen Glass Onion, where they're like, uh, you know, a, a hijinks movie where, uh, what's his name? Um, Ed Norton. Ed, Edward Norton is the bad guy, and a team of different people comes together to whatever, and a jewel, and <laughs> it's like, oh, you mean Glass Onion? It's like, no, The Italian Job, because they, like, just are the same. <laughs> Um, the Italian Job is one of those movies that my parents convinced me was the pinnacle of cinema um, until I was like probably 13 and then I was like oh there are other movies than this <laughs> this isn't the only movie that exists um, but I'll pick him in this because he's pretty he go he doesn't have a well he doesn't have a ton of screen time in either I guess but um, I'll pick him in this um yeah I will ugh. I wish you put him in Animal House, because I love him in that movie. Um, but I will, I'll choose him in this, because I think he serves. Yeah, I'll choose him in this, too. He is terrifying. Um, I was also, I w- didn't think of Animal House, to be honest, but I was, which oh, would have been so a good, good one. You got to see um, his ass. Ugh. <laughs> I was going to choose him as a Hawkeye Pierce in the original MASH movie. He was, yeah. No, it doesn't, does nothing for you. No. no. Um, all right, next one is Willow Shields as Prim um, in this, or as the seventh place finisher, finisher on season 20 of Dancing with the Stars. <laughs> I was like, what What could you possibly say that I'm even going to know? Because I was, like, skimming her IMDb, because I was like, what else has she been in? And it, Nothing. Uh, not much. Not much. Um, good for her for being on Dancing in the Stars, and, I mean, I guess seventh place is nothing to sneeze at. Um, but the way that she does that, those emotional no's as Katniss is, you know, going mm. up on the stage, she really, she had one shot and she took it. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I got to agree with you there, Dara. I her in this. Yeah, I'll take her in this too. <laughs> we were watching though, pretty recently on Netflix, a show called Spinning Out with the girl from the Maze Runner and her younger sister is played by Willow Shields and they're like hmm. ice skaters. Oh, yeah, it's it's not a good show. I do not recommend it. <laughs> but I was but I saw her and I was like, where do I know her from? Mm-hmm. And it was Prim. Mm. Yeah. Um, last one. This is the last one. Lenny Kravitz as Cinna, or the voice of the newborn baby in the 1998 movie Rugrats movie. <laughs> oh my god! Like Dill, he plays baby Dill. I don't know. He just plays a newborn baby, and he won like a, like a Nickelodeon award for like best voiceover or something. Oh my god, Slay! Yeah. Um, I no, I still have to pick him in this though because he also just really. I, I was saying like I did not know who that was, and when we went to see this in theaters, and I was like twelve, and you were like trying to explain to me like no, like that's like Lenny Kravitz. He's like a he, you know, and I was like that. I don't know what you mean by like mm-hmm. reggae music means nothing to me, Jen. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know how you said clove shaped you? Like, Cinna shaped Dara's, like, fashion style for the next five years after this movie, I Yeah, think. right? I was like, I want to dress up kids who are about to go fight to the death. <laughs> Fire! <laughs> um, I'm going to choose him as the voiceover newborn baby in the Margrats. Because his character never really did anything for me, if I'm being honest. I, I will go for him in this, too. And, and that is it for this star-studded cast Amazing. of Hunger Games. I'm shocked that you um, didn't put Jack Quaid in there. Yeah. You you did a boys reference, and you didn't put Jack Quaid. Oh, he's who's Jack Quaid? He plays Marvel. He's just one of the other, um, like, yeah. District 2 kids who's really into it. Okay. And he plays the lead he, on the boys. Oh. And he's obviously nepotism baby extraordinaire. Yeah, I didn't even catch that, to be yeah. honest. Oh, yeah. Wow. Uh, we love it. Um, well, thank you, as always, for letting us spew our opinions. And we'll see you next week. All right. I love you guys. Have an awesome week. Bye, Bye Jen. I also remember a kind of a big hubbub for a while when this book got released was that everyone was saying that she copied an existing piece of media um, so there's this Japanese movie called Battle Royale, and okay. it's based on a 1999 book called Battle Royale, and then in 2000, they made it into a movie, and it's very similar 
in concept and in like overarching themes about uh-huh. like corrupt power structures. And it basically is that like a bunch of kids have to go into an arena and fight to the death. Um, mm. And it, I remember a lot of people, or at least, you know, on Tumblr, where I was getting all of my Mm -hmm. uh, cultural Mm -hmm. news, that people were like, um, Suzanne Collins, like, literally just copied it. And I don't know if she's ever, like, said that, like, obviously she drew some inspiration Mm -hmm. for it, or, like, there are clearly some similarities. I don't really know where we all stand on that. But there is a previously existing piece of media from Japan that basically is the blueprint for The Hunger Games. (sighs) Yeah. I haven't seen it, though, so I can't really say. No, I couldn't say. Sorry, I'm still looking at these maps, and (laughs) the amount of them that put the capital in Utah? (laughs) Why? The Mormons. Caesar Flickerman is clearly a Mormon. Oh my god, shut up. (laughs) This is if we let Mormons run the world. This is what would happen. No, I'm sorry. It It would be way less exciting. Yeah. Yep. It's just over in, like, Colorado. Do you ever see those um, TikToks of the people who go onto the BYU campus and they ask all the Mormon kids, like, would you rather drink a cup of coffee or get shot? And they're <laughs> yeah, all like, um, I think I'd I get, get shot. shot. <laughs> <laughs> those crack you. I think some of them must so be funny. fake, but... <laughs> so funny. Yeah, no, I love that. <laughs> Ugh, can we talk about how badly I want Stanley Tucci in this? I want him badly in everything, but something about... His fucking... His big teeth and his blue wig. <laughs> yeah, his fuck-ass, like, character. <laughs> <laughs> He's just trying his best to, you know, to to play the role that he's so clearly born to play, which is, is this uh, announcer guy. He's so great at it. Yeah. And the way he just, like, looks to camera and open mouth laughs after everything everyone <laughs> says is so scary robotic. And it's exactly like, wh- just watch Wendy Williams. He must have oh taken... Oh, my God. He must have I taken her. some inspiration from Miss Wendy. Or, like, I don't know, the ladies of The View or, I miss or something. I so much. Um... Because obviously, as as well as this being a commentary on, like, capitalism and stuff, it definitely is also about, like, media and, mm-hmm. like, the media's control over, you know, actual world events and stuff. And the yeah. way that they show, you know, these kids having to go through, like, the, the media cycle of mm-hmm. being on this, like, reality show yeah. is a pretty good example of, like, they're like, oh, well, you have to get people to like you because if they don't like you, then nobody's going to send you gifts and then you're going to die. Yeah. And it's like, bro... I, I have, like, a history paper due next week. Like, yeah, really? I don't know. Like, I just, I had my first period two weeks ago. <laughs> like, this is too much. Oh, my God. Imagine getting your period in the arena. That sucks. Oh, no way. That'd really suck. But, um, oh, you know who else I want bad? I just want, like, <coughs> first of all, as a 12-year-old, this movie's really hot. Oh, yeah. Because you're looking Everyone at- is hot. Yeah. You're sitting there, and you're like, these are all very sexy people. Mm-hmm. Oh my god. Which is why I'm but, like, so, now I've, so... I've transitioned to thinking that, um, god, what's his fucking name? Sina? Lenny Kravitz? Oh, well, yeah, obviously, Lenny Kravitz. No, um, you showed hey, me. You showed me Lenny Kravitz's dong <laughs> when we were watching this. You're like, Dara, do you want to see this video of Lenny Kravitz's actual dong slipping <laughs> out of his pants? And obviously, I, I had to take you up on that. Yeah. It's what we all thought. But yeah, I definitely, as a child, did not find any attraction to Haymitch or Woody Harrelson. But you know ever. what? Now I'm kind of, I kind of rock with it. His wig is laid. <laughs> Dude, rent was due. <laughs> he had one shot. I always remember thinking that his character in the books was a lot more compelling. Or yeah. that they could have given him a little more screen time or, like, development in the movies. I like him but... better in the second one because, obviously, there's more of him, kind yeah, of. for but... sure. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, I think as if you weren't, like, actively reading the books or if it had been a minute or, you know, whatever, you don't immediately get that he's from their district. Like, he's the winner from their district. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, I think that's something that... I was obviously only aware of because I had read the book, but I don't think they make that super clear in the movie because mm-hmm. they're just like, oh, you're the mentor. Yeah. But like, no, the mentor is a winner from the district. And yeah. He's the only person who's ever won from, from yep. District 12, mm-hmm. which is, I don't think, super apparent, which I think is super important to his character Absolutely. to know that. Because like, that's why he's a fucking alcoholic. Like, yeah. Because he has to do this shit every single year and go to the Capitol mm-hmm. and like, his life is miserable. Yeah. 
I, I would also be an alcoholic. I would just volunteer so that I could ball out in the capital and, like, eat really good food and, yeah. like, slay for a week and then just, like, throw myself on the bottom <laughs> and die. If I lived in District 12, oh no, not for me. Yeah. Well, f- where we live, I guess we're in District 12. I so. just don't buy it. But maybe. I think it's, like, Maryland. I think it's a little lower. I think up here is, like, District 13. Uninhabited. Yeah. Which it should be fucking California is about to fall off of the map. California's underwater. Yeah. That's clearly, I mean, tu- Suzanne Collins wrote this book in 2000 and like early 2000s, so yeah. maybe things were different. <laughs> where is she from? I want to know. Did she put herself in fucking like District 1? Yeah, where's bitch? Suzanne Collins from? Let's look it up. I bet she's from the UK. Honest? No, American book actor or writer, whatever. Hartford, Connecticut. Shouts out. That's crazy. Oh my goodness. Which we were just joking that Elizabeth Banks is like proudly from Lawrence, Mass, which is just yeah, like Pitts, so... Pittsfield, sorry. Pittsfield. Sorry, yeah. Pittsfield, Mass. P- Pittsfield. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> the Berkshires. Oh my god. Which I mean, maybe. Mm-hmm. I guess, like, yeah, I guess Berkshire's pride, I guess. But like, I don't know if you're... Pittsfield is like, like the it's like the biggest like city in um, the Berkshires kind of thing. But it's also a city and it's not like... <laughs> yeah. Like, like, that's where General Electric um was stationed for like forever and they pumped like the water full of pcbs (laughs) (laughs) elizabeth thanks proud supporter (laughs) we're putting out the the fake news about yeah thanks but i feel like the only people who like are from massachusetts who are like are aggressive about it are like boston yeah like mark Wahlberg. like yeah so it's weird when somebody's like proud resident of Uh pittsfield mass like okay okay i guess i mean (laughs) I kind of go to bat for Worcester yeah. a lot, which is a city near Love us it. where the people, dirty woo people are like Worcester is gross, and I'm like it's charming if you give it a chance. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah, but yeah. damn Hartford, Connecticut, Miss Suzanne, she felt like she was in the thick of it, mm-hmm. and she and she was like, I have seen some shit. Yeah. <laughs> Wild. Um, the editing of this movie. That's. Those- Kind of crazy. Dude, the shaky camera is a fucking staple. It, it's, but it's like, in the beginning, it's so crazy. And then they color grade the movie from like borderline black and white. <laughs> <laughs> to, like, the most luscious green you've ever seen to, in your life. like, Lady Gaga Chromatica video, we're in the capital, and the color saturation is turned <laughs> up to 10,000. Because they're like... Like, it's almost crunchy. <laughs> Caesar Flickerman's hair is blue, and you need to know it. <laughs> But I feel like um, the the way that the people in the Capitol present themselves is really the logical next step for the one percent. Absolutely. Like, what's his name? the The game maker guy, oh not Don, not Donald Sutherland, but the guy who's like running the day. Yeah, I can't think of his name. His little curly beard. I love it. We're gonna. See I want to skin him and put it on me. <laughs> We're gonna see Elon Musk with, like, a weird, like, weird beard lineup in 2023, I think. Yeah, that's on your bingo card? Put it on your bingo card. Yeah. Or, like, I feel like all the buccal fat removal surgeries are gonna turn into, like, cat whisker. Oh my god. Like, the way that everyone in the Capitol, like, does that. Because, again, I remember it being way crazier in the books of, like, that everyone had, like, snake skin or whatever. (laughs) Um, But, like, in the movie, it's obviously just a little more, like, everyone has on fun eyelashes. But I feel like... Like, dyeing your skin, like, glitter or something. Mm-hmm. That's going to be the next step for, for yeah. like, celebrities. I think you're right. Mm-hmm. They should do a Hunger Games-themed Met Gala, where you have to dress like you're Yo. from the Because the costumes in this movie go kind of crazy. Insane. I love them. They're beautiful. Yeah, we watched this with um, Alyssa, and she was sitting there. She's like, I don't understand how it wasn't nominated for, like, costume or, like, set design. And I understand because it's not, like a big time movie and the Oscars are a piece of shit and all that shit. Yeah. But like it it is gorgeous. The costume to look at. slayed. Yeah. yeah. Even just Effie Trinket in her like insane wig and her little oh like God. pantsuit. When she says that's mahogany, the memeage that came out of that oh, line yeah. alone could launch a thousand ships. Yeah. <laughs> It changed my brain chemistry. It wasn't even that good. No. But I just remember, like, ev- it was yeah. everywhere. Yeah. The gif of her saying, that's mahogany. It flooded Tumblr. <laughs> <laughs> I almost drowned. So, do we want to get into... Our regularly scheduled programming? Yeah. I Absolutely. We obviously have to start off with playing Fuck, Mary Kill between Effie Trinket, Cinna, 
and Hey Mitch, because they're like the three who kind of hang out. I'm going to kill Effie. Easy. She's mm-hmm. insufferable. I couldn't take it. I'm going to... Hmm. I'm going to fuck Cinna, and I'm going to marry Hamish because I think I could fix him. Yeah. And he seems fun. Maybe a little too fun. I think I would get dragged down. You think you would also become an alcoholic? Yeah, I'm, I'm you know, it's not going to take much. <laughs> <laughs> for that lifestyle. Yeah. Um, I feel like I'm going to marry Cinna because yeah. I feel like he, he's got, like, his cute little group of fashion designer mm. friends, and maybe they can, like... He's, like, a little too zen for me. Yeah. But I feel like he's definitely in, like, a polycule. Oh, my God. For sure. And, like, I don't know. That's uh-huh. going to be a whole thing. And they can be, like, yeah. I can be, like, really pitch that the next, um, you know, children we have to dress up before mm-hmm. they die, that they have to, like, hold Muppets and I can, like, make the yeah. Muppets for uh-huh. them or something. Yeah, okay. Or we, like, make Muppets of the children. Mm-hmm. Or, I don't know, like, I can embroider some fun yeah. patches for the jackets. I can, you know, I'll be employed. You can pull your weight, yeah. For sure. And okay. then I think I'm going to fuck... Hey, Mitch, and I'll kill Effie. Yeah. Do you think he's even able to get it up? No way. Just whiskey dick. No way. Yeah. But Effie, I can't handle that. No. I can't be handling all that. Her little white makeup is gonna just get all over (laughs) me, and that's a no. Can't do it. Simply cannot do it. Um... And then I guess out of the whole movie, because we do have some other good options, specifically Mm -hmm. just Mr. Caesar Flickerman. Yeah. Um, I... Feel like I'm gonna kill Katniss's mom because she's a cunt. Yeah, like, I literally you get it. You're depressed. Your husband died. For, but like, figure it out. For the most split of seconds, I thought that was Edie Falco. Oh my god! It's not, and I knew it wasn't. But I was like, she could have ate it, that. It could have been. Yeah. But I'm gonna kill her. I'm yeah, gonna. Call. I'm gonna fuck Caesar Flickerman because I hate Stanley Tucci. Yeah. And then I'm gonna marry who out of everyone? I'll marry Donald Sutherland. Yeah, for power reasons? For power, yeah. So also so that I can, like, take it down from inside the house, you know? Yeah, okay. Um, like, I'll be an ally on the inside. Yeah. I'm gonna... I'm gonna marry Caesar, because I think it's all an act. And I mm. think... I think he's, um, just doing what he has to do. Um, well, he's doing it great. Yeah, exactly. I'm buying it. Yeah, he's still putting his pussy into his work. <laughs> I'm gonna marry him... I'm gonna I'm gonna kill the game maker guy because I want his beard. Um, I will be skinning him, um, and I'm gonna fuck. I'll still fuck Cinna. Nice. Yeah. Hot. Yeah. Lenny Kravitz. Hot. Hot. I remember my mom trying to explain to me like who Lenny Kravitz was mm-hmm. when we saw this. She's like, "No, you don't understand. He he's a musician." And I'm like, "Okay." So means, what? Means nothing to me. <laughs> All I know is that that's Josh Hutcherson from Firehouse Dog. And bridge to Terabithia. Of course, Icon. of course. Icon. Yeah. Um, and then what are you gonna eat and drink with this? I'm okay, so originally I said I went with the idea of a like a blueberry pie. They have like the, the night loss, the yep. berries, it's a big thing. But and it's so funny that you brought Panera up. I'm going to say that you eat a bread bowl with the mac and cheese. Okay. Because of the bakery and the big bakery scene that they show you 17 times. The same flashback over and yeah. over. Like, we get it. You threw the bread out in the rain yeah. to the pigs and then to Katniss. Yeah. I think you take that hunk of bread and you hollow it out mm. and you put mac and cheese in it. Slay. Yeah. Carbs on carbs. And then to drink, I... Obviously went with a fucking activated charcoal drink, because I'm just that unoriginal. Um, But there's this one I found called Fade to Black, and it's, like, chartreuse and, like, black rum and ginger and, like, lemon juice and lime juice. So it's still kind of, like, citrusy and fruity. Um, So I think you rock with that. Cute. Yeah. What about you? I similarly... So, at first, I was like, fire. The theme of fire. Of course. Fajitas. Ooh. Creme brulee. Something that you've got to, like, torch it, right? Because of the, like, fire theme. And then, obviously, I was like, the berries, you know, some sort of, like, blackberry jam. And then I figure you take some essential elements. You take pita's bread. Oh. You take... Prim's goat cheese. Because at the beginning, Katniss is like, Prim, you can sell cheese from your goat. Oh. So we've got Prim's goat cheese, pita's bread, and then you've got the sort of berry jam. So you just do a little oh, a little crustini or something. Very basic oh. of me, but it's it's taking elements from the film. I like it. And then I think very similarly, you make a um, blueberry mojito. 
Oh, so they've got the mint and then that also... That sounds so good right now. Um, the mint is like the leaves that they're using to do the healing, yeah. right? And then the berries are the, the nightshade. Yeah. Which is... And it's also a nice little refreshing Gorgeous. drink for this. This movie's kind of long. It is pretty long. It's like over two hours. It's well paced though, I think. Yeah. It doesn't feel bad, yeah. Or you do like a spiced rum punch with like fireball or something because Ugh, fire yeah. again. But uh, not my preference. Yeah, no. Keep that fireball away from me. Um, And then, I mean... I'm watching Catching Fire after this. Yeah. There's only one real good answer, and it's to follow up with the second movie. I haven't movie. watched this movie in so long, and I was like, wow, I'm kind of in the mood to, like, watch the second one now. Yeah. I remember not caring for the, the third ones at all. No. I didn't like the don't third book. Don't give a book. shit. I didn't like the third book, and I didn't like the third movie parts one or two. No. I remember just being over it. Yeah. Um, unfortunately. I remember I didn't mind the first movie from the first part of, like, the... Mm-hmm. Last movie. They were they were trying their best, but yeah. I I still if I didn't fuck with the books ending, so I'm like, mm-hmm. what are you gonna do? Like, yeah. um, but I said that you can go to a different sort of dystopia. Okay. So you just take the dystopia thing and you sort of age it up. So either The Matrix mm. or Mad Max. Oh, that's so good. Are two like sort of sci-fi dystopian movies that I really enjoy. That's really good. Um. And definitely are certainly different to this one, but in the same kind of genre mm-hmm. or, like, vibe. Or go watch the 2000 film Battle Royale, which I've never Fuck seen it. and I can't recommend, but is apparently what this is based off of. Yeah. Um, and then form an opinion, you know? Did she steal it? Is it yeah. a reference? Is, you know, who's to say? Mm-hmm. And then what are you rating this movie? I'm going to give it a nine. See, I... I know that there is a no way that I could ever be objective about this piece of media... Yeah, this is fully, yeah. But, again, I felt that way about Harry Potter for a long mm-hmm. time, and I now fully am capable of being objective about that yeah. and being critical of that. Yeah. Um, well, she made it kind of easy. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, again. But I, I think being like, oh, I, I can't, you know, have any bad opinions about it because I loved it so much when I was 12 mm-hmm. isn't really a great excuse. Yeah. And I do think that this movie does have some issues that I would certainly, I don't know, like the the public perception mm-hmm. of it and the and the lack of diversity and yeah. I think like there's an argument th- that I've read somewhere that like Katniss is supposed to be indigenous and they like completely washed that I, over. I've never heard that. Part. I don't even know. But I'll give it a 7. Okay. Cuz I do still think it stands the test of time yeah. as like the YA dystopia, like yeah. it girl, like yeah. she did that. Yeah, we would not have a Maze Runner, nope. a Divergent. Never. Uh, it just, you know, this really was the the, the groundwork. Mm-hmm. Um, and it slayed. Yeah, it's been a minute. I think if you asked me my opinion of this movie before we just watched mm-hmm. it, I might have been like, eh, yeah, overhyped. It was, I didn't, you know, yeah. I had a good ass time. Yeah. And I, and I it's am. It's a fun movie to watch. I am now in the mood to watch the second one yeah. for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, this is definitely our big kickoff of yeah. January name in progress. <laughs> um, comment what you think a good pun for young adult in January yeah. would be. YA January is probably just what we're going to stick yeah. with. Um, but yeah, keep. Uh, your ears and eyes open. We've got some some classic bangers from Oof. back when we were in middle school. Um, Get coming ready. Up. To kick off this new year, you know, as we're moving forward yeah. in our lives, growing, aging, yeah. maturing. We are looking back at the things that shaped us. Let's, you know, take a, a blast from the past. Mm-hmm. Um, and as always, please comment and DM us with what you'd like us to cover in the future as far as movies or themes. Mm-hmm. Or sometimes we'll do a whole month about, like, an actor or something. Yeah. If you, you know, actors with great discographies. Also, please send us your opinions about the Oscars race. Yes. I see all the movies every year, so I'm pretty deep in it as far as, like, the Golden Globes are coming mm-hmm. up. And then the Oscars are obviously, like, we're going to roll into that. <laughs> so I love talking about that with people. Tell me what you thought of The Fablemans. I didn't like it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> tell me what you thought about avatar the way of water just any you know new movie we also have a discord which uh some people are in and it's just like movie discussion in general but yeah also dm us all that Mm -hmm. good stuff all of our links to all of our things are in the description below and we love you all and goodbye and good night